السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا The title of this episode is They seek to cause separation between a man and his wife This title is based around the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses magic in a lot of detail and he mentions how they learn magic and then Allah mentions وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ Allah mentions that they learn that, they learn this magic by which they seek to cause separation between a man and his wife now, it's important to note that magic can be done for a variety of reasons. Magic can be done to make an individual fall in love with you. Or magic can be done in order to kill a man. Magic can be done in order to make a man lose his mind or make a man lose his intellect or his wealth or perhaps even his religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. However, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention that they seek to cause divorce and separation between a man and his wife? The simple reason is this. It is the most common reason why people perform magic on others. The most common reason why people do magic on others is to cause divorce between a man and his wife. Now, the next question, the next logical question is why? Why would somebody perform magic on another when they know that magic is disbelief? To learn magic or to practice magic or to have magic performed on another individual, this is disbelief. Something which puts a person outside of the fold of Islam. وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ Allah mentions that they learn that which they separate a man from his wife. Why would somebody have such an evil intention? Why would you break up a family? Why would you destroy the lives of not just two individuals but of their children? Perhaps even of the wider community and the wider society. The first reason, and this is the foundational reason, because they don't understand Islam. If they truly understood the correct creed, if they truly understood the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they wouldn't go near these things. They would know, I'm going to stand in front of Allah and I'm going to be held accountable. If they feared Allah, then they wouldn't do this magic. So the foundational reason, a lack of fear of Allah, a lack of understanding of Islam. But there may be also other reasons. And let's look at some of those reasons. It may be for hatred, due to hatred and animosity. So they want to ruin your marriage because they dislike you. They have some enmity towards you. They have some hatred towards you. Maybe you had a disagreement once upon a time. Maybe you did business and it didn't go well. Or whatever the reason, now there is a personal hatred. So what's the easiest and what's the best way that they can get back to you, back, back at you in their eyes is to destroy your marriage, to take your children away from you, to destroy your home life. So it may be due to hatred and animosity. It may be due to jealousy. They may do this magic due to jealousy. They see you happily married. They see you playing with your children in the park. They see you coming and you're doing well in life and yet they feel jealous, they have this envy, they have this hatred towards the fact that you are doing well. So they want to see you lose these things. It may be to take revenge. You went and you didn't get married to his daughter. You didn't get married to his son. As a result of that, he doesn't want to see you get married ever. Or he doesn't want to see you happily married. Why didn't you marry my daughter? You didn't marry my daughter? Okay, in that case, we're going to see if you ever get married. Or in that case, whoever you do marry, I'm going to make sure that I destroy that marriage. I'm going to make sure that I ruin that marriage. Or it may be just because that person, he is evil and he wants to see fitna and facade. He wants to see that corruption spread in the land. Now look, 
one of the main aims and one of the main objectives of the shayateen is to cause divorce between husband and wife. As we know, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, that each and every single one of you is assigned with a qareen, a companion from amongst the jinn. And he stays with you and he whispers to you and he tries to get you to fall into sin. He tries to get you to commit evil actions, immoral actions. This is from the whispering of the jinn. He's with you all the time in your ear, just whispering, whispering, whispering. And we all know about this. Look, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that Iblis, he places his throne on the water and he sends out his troops to cause fitna and facade, cause evil and corruption in the land. At the end of the day, they all come back and they all report to him. I managed to do this, I managed to do that, I managed to get a man to fornicate, I managed to get a man to commit a, a haram action, I managed to get this one to fall into that sin, this one to fall into that sin, I managed to uh, you know, entice him into doing this X, Y and Z. And he says to all of them, you haven't done anything, you haven't achieved anything, you've done nothing. But then one of the shayateen, one of the troops who he sent out, he comes and he says, I stayed with this man and I whispered to him until I managed to cause separation and divorce between him and his wife. Look at this. I stayed with him and I whispered and I did what I had to do and I used all of my tools and I used all of the tricks in the book as they say and I managed to get him to divorce his wife. Iblis says, you, you, come close, come close. You have done well. You have done well. Look at this, subhanAllah. And then Iblis brings him close and he rewards him. Look at this. The ones who did all X, Y and Z, all the other different sins. You haven't done anything. But the one who managed to cause separation between husband and wife, you have done well, come close. And then he rewards him and he raises him in the sight of the shayati. Look. Why? Why is it the case? Because if you can cause divorce between a man and his wife, you are ruining their lives. You have broken up the family unit, the whole backbone of society, the family unit. You have managed to tear that apart. Not only have you done that, you've broken two families. Because when two people get together and they get married, their families are also joined. He has his in-laws, she has her in-laws and two families come together. So you're not only cementing two people, you're cementing two families when you get together. This way the society is strengthened. But if you break that marriage apart, you break that union apart, you're ripping the two people apart, you're also ripping the two families apart. But more than this, you are ripping apart the family structure for the children as well. And the children are going to suffer. The children are going to suffer. They're going to be brought up in a broken home, in a single parent family. And there's going to be a lot of fighting and arguing and they're going to witness this before the divorce and after the divorce as well. And when they witness this, the arguing and the fighting and the constant bickering, it's going to take its toll on the children as well. So look, you break up two people, you break up two families, you ruin the lives of the children as well. And doing this, eventually, if we can get enough of this going on, then we ruin the society and the community as a whole. It starts off on the grassroots level, but it builds and it builds and it builds until we find what we have today, my dear brothers and sisters. We find that society is crumbling from within. The family unit is crumbling from within. Our wider families and our wider communities, they are falling down. Divorce is so commonplace. Nowadays, it's hard to get married. We struggle to get married. And then once we get married, it's even harder to stay married. We struggle and we strive to get married. And we think, Alhamdulillah, I have managed to complete half of my deen as the Messenger salam told us. I have managed to guard my private parts, guard my chastity, guard my izzah, guard my honor. And yet when we get married, we find this is only the beginning. The difficulties are only just beginning. And so subhanAllah, this is why Allah mentions in Surah number 2, 
ayah number 102. They learn this magic and by it they seek to cause separation between a man and his wife. Allah could have mentioned any of the other reasons why they perform the magic. But Allah mentioned this reason because perhaps it's the most serious. Perhaps it's the most commonplace. And so it is worth us taking our time out when we get married or before we get married to learn about these things because we need to educate ourselves. We need to educate our families. We need to educate our children because although we might not be going through this now, how do we know that at a later stage, somebody, our neighbor, our relative, our loved one might not become jealous of us and do magic on us? How do we know that we might not start a, a, an animosity between us and our colleagues, us and our business partner? And as a result of that, to get back at us, he does magic. How do we not know or how do we know that we're not going to come across somebody who's just plain evil and he wants to ruin the family? and he's going to do magic on us. Like we've mentioned in the first episode, even the Prophet wasallam was afflicted with magic. So none of us are safe. None of us can feel totally safe and secure. This doesn't mean that we live our lives constantly looking out over our shoulder, worried about magic, not being able to sleep, being concerned about magic, no. But we need to learn about these things. We need to educate ourselves. We need to take the means to protect ourselves. One of the means of protection is knowledge. So we see that this magic, one of the main reasons is to cause divorce between husband and wife. And we have briefly touched upon the dangers and the destruction that this causes within the lives of everybody, within your life, within your spouse's life, within your mother and father and brother and sister's lives, but also, my dear brothers and sisters, think about your children. Think about your children who in this society where there is already so much evil, already so much destruction, already so much misguidance, they're going to grow up in a single parent family. They're going to witness all of this bickering and arguing. On top of that, we're going to have the external influence of the shayateen, which we're going to talk about. The whispering of the shayateen, perhaps jinn possession as well. Other things are going wrong around them. All of these, when the odds are already stacked against them, we go and make it even more difficult. So think about these things. These are things that we need to reflect on. So I ask Allah to protect us and our family unit from this magic. This magic which the people, they cause division between husband and wife, division between a father and his son, division between a mother and her daughter, division, 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 destruction, destruction, destruction. This is why Allah says they learn that knowledge which harms them and it does not profit them. And they know that whoever has any portion of this magic he has no portion in the hereafter. They are literally selling their souls. They are literally selling their akhirah when they practice this magic. But these people are willing to do that. So we need to know how to defend against it. We need to know about how to overcome it. Overcome it as a family unit because you're not alone. If you have a wife, then use that wife. If you have a husband, come together with your husband and let's tackle this together. Let's look back at this in five years time and say, you know what? This strengthened our relationship. They tried to break us apart, yet because we have that knowledge, because we came together for the sake of Allah, let's come together now and say, you know what? That was the best thing that ever happened to us. So while these magicians, they try to destroy the society, they try to break apart the, the fabric structure of the family, let's come together, let's strengthen it by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the next episodes, we're going to look at suspicion. We're going to look at how to use the family uh, to come together. We're going to look at how to prevent jealousy and envy and evil eye. We're going to look at all of these things inshallah. So please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.